Full swing. All right. Getting good at knowing how to do this swiftly. All right. So, Lifeline Squad, how we doing, folks? Wonderful, Hi. wonderful. Great, great, great. Good. Let me make sure I turn the volume down and share it on my page. No. Here we go. New. New. Okay. All right. Ha <laughs> ha. Good to go. All right. Wonderful Wednesday. We back again. Consecration week kicking in. I didn't mean to make that rhyme, but it did. Um, bar. Bars. Bars. <laughs> bars. Uh, bars. Uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully your week is stupendous. That We are three days in. I don't see anybody with the starving face like they're about to pass out. So hopefully uh, not only you're nourishing spiritually and don't need the bread to get you along, but if you're getting some downloads. Anybody have a, a powerful word from God that they receive at any point that they're allowed to share? Anything that was uh, phenomenal for you or a revelation or something that God just peeled back in the last three days? Anything? Uh, I get to hop in on this one. I'm giving. I'm, I'm just, giving. Like, I, I, I was being courteous, trying to see if somebody was gonna go. <laughs> okay. Anybody? I'm, you know, I'm gonna hop in. Um. With, well, because you know the kids are fasting with us too. So I'm um, just with that today. Today, what the Lord was dealing with us today was um, uh, making sure that our lives, uh, making sure that we're producing fruit. And that we don't have lives that are indicative of that tree that Jesus cursed. Where our lives, we may just have leaves, but no fruit. So we might look the part, we might sound the part, people might even think highly of us. But once you delve back in up under the leaves, there's no fruit. Meaning there's nothing to nourish anybody. There's nothing for anybody to take away. There's no substance. So that's what we were talking about today. I want to make sure our lives have. Uh, it's interesting because leaves and fruit. Leaves can provide shade and covering, but fruit can provide nourishment. So it's it's the upgrade, not just leaves. You're looking good. We know something's going on in the soil when you have leaves. Something's happening, but it's a whole nother level when you have leaves and fruit. So that's where we were. So so I like that just like pushing past looking like it's productive mm -hmm. ah, i seen somebody must have been delving into my conversation with god earlier on tonight's topic i see what you i see what you did there sir i, I agree with that wow wow so Amen. pushing past not just looking but actually having fruit and being productive i received yeah. that i received yeah. that Okay. Anybody? Anybody else? Anybody else? That's crap. I'm I'm right there with Matt. Like when it when you uh when you in the vein of of God or of Christ, man, everybody be like be on the same way when you get in the frequency. It's it's everybody look at it a different a different way, but it's the same thing. Like what you're talking about, pruning and abiding in me, and just, that's what yeah. that's exactly where I'm at. And that's man. that's that's why uh. That's why when you step away from like denominations and you just allow the relationship side of God to speak, it's like no one denomination has like a, a, a foothold on God alone. Like if you're truly with him, he's speaking fluidly. And so that's why in my walk when I've been, I mean, I've been under one denomination, like the majority of my walk. But when I ran into other people from different denominations who were like speaking kingdom or talking about the same thing that maybe God was saying to me or maybe something I heard on a message on a Sunday I'm like wait a minute I thought I thought I thought our denomination had it down how do you hearing the same thing we hear him but that's his spirit once you're tuned into him and you're letting him flow it's man the rules that we put in place to try and make us feel like we great like like Max kind of touching on like those things that gives a presentation of us being productive when we get past that and just allow um him to kind of move in it it's like, man, I can see brothers and sisters across the globe. There's people who are living for Christ, don't have a nomination, but they're honoring him because their relationship. So yeah, that frequency, that vein, and man, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing that a lot this season from our champion chats to the prayer lines I've been on, uh, the men's groups. It's like, 
God is speaking, like you said, the frequency, he's giving it from different angles to each person from how their character defined, but the output is the same. The fruit is the same. But like God saying like, this is what I'm looking for. And I'm like, man, let's go with it. And um, last night, who, oh, Paul, he killed me with the one visual I never thought of. He was like, there's giants in the land and then they had giant fruit. I went, oh, never put those two together. Just only saw the one aspect. So now I'm like, man, as, as Matt, you talking like, hey, I'm trying to produce fruit. I ain't trying to get the little grapes you get from like grocery outlet. I want the big <laughs> joints, the, the ones that look like they've been uh, genetically modified to where <clears throat> me and my family got to carry them on two sticks like they uh, pork. <laughs> so that's the goal. So yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. And I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say because I, I don't want to hop in too early. So thank you. Um, let's 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 dive in tonight first. Uh, for those who are joining us um, on the internet, thank you for joining us on our uh, Kingdom class. Our Wednesdays are always fulfilling because it's not only us learning, but it's us bringing in everything that God's saying to us individually so we can build it in together. So let's step into God with prayer. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who I get to not only learn from, glean from, but we get to build in you. We thank you for the relationships that we have established in you individually, that as we come together, Lord God, we unite and we come greater from everything that's revealed in our conversation. So Lord, I pray this evening that you just sit on this conversation. You sit on our understanding. You sit on our hearts, Lord God. You sit on our tongues and our mouths. Let every word that's spoke and breathed out, let it be influenced by your Holy Spirit. Let it be pulled from the source of you in heaven and let us just combine these things that's edifying unto you to make us greater. Lord God, we come together to just appreciate you. This has been a phenomenal week already, Lord God. The time we spent before you, whether it's in prayer and worship or reading your word, Lord God, we thank you for the valued time that we've had, that you've invested in us. You sat with us and Lord, and let us utilize everything we're given to move into the next. Let preparation in this season be built on for the greater that you have in mind following down the line. So Lord, I pray that as we engage in our conversation tonight, that new things are discovered, unlocked and released so we can be greater in you. Lord, we bless you and we praise you. In Jesus name we pray, amen. 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 All right. So this is the final Wednesday, the final Kingdom class for uh, the Soul Series, Season of Upgraded Lives. This is the final one. So we got to bask in this. You know, if you want to take a quick moment to let a tear drop from everything that was accomplished, go right ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to judge you. Uh, we didn't have some powerful conversations, mm -hmm. even when we were, you guys are adding in. If it was just me up there filming at the church, it's just these things have boosted me and i i find myself um recounting and also uh revisiting and saying the things that many of us uh heard in our conversations like some of the outlooks some of the stances i've been sharing that with people now it's like a part of my conversation so it's been activated in me so my upgrade is kicking in so this is our final wednesday in the season of soul which I'm, I'm so happy what God's going to do afterwards. And then Sunday will be the final wrap up for us to kind of step into it. So this week is a, uh, actually, we can actually replace the you in this week. Instead of it being the um, season of upgraded lives, this is also the unlock lives. So we're being unlocked on Sunday. So when we get together on Sunday, digitally or physically, mm. get ready to bring in the fullness of him releasing it. Amen. I'm, I'm so geeked Amen. about this happening Hallelujah. now and then for the rest of the year. What is the rest of 2020 about to look like? June Hallelujah. is going to be a tipping point for many people. So yeah. we're about to rock it out. Yeah. So tonight, um, as we're looking at our full upgrade, as we're stepping into it, the topic focus is nakedness. Mm. <laughs> in order to be upgraded, there's parts mm. of us or understanding that has to be accessible or uh, have to be investigated in God. So nakedness, uh, that's a heavy one. I know when we say it, we're like, ooh. Mm. Actually, my, uh, my, my friend, my uh, partner from um, my hometown, he made a song called Naked a couple months ago and he tagged me on it and I was just playing it over and over. And he was just killing it with the verse. It was called uh, Strip Me Till I'm Naked. And it was, like, mm. it was like just a real good 
it was a true to the heart song. So shouts out to you, Paul. Um, I, I go back to listen to it every now and then. But um, yeah, nakedness, it's essential. It's what's required. Mm. And it's also what was the design from the beginning. So as we're going into nakedness, delve in, tell me, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about nakedness, naked, and let's not take from natural perspective because all of us have been certain places in our lives, but uh, think about it in reference to what's your biblical reference with the word naked comes up. What's the first thought? What if it's a verse, if it's a person, if it's an outlook, what comes mm. to mind when you hear the word naked or nakedness? Nothing being hidden from God. Yeah. Nothing being hidden from God. Okay. I like that. I would say uh, stripped of preconceived notions. Stripped mm. of preconceived notions. I just think mm. letting it all out. <laughs> it is <laughs> always somebody like, hey, you gotta let it all hang. <laughs> uh, let it... <laughs> Wait. Did my mind throw that extra word in there? Did you say yeah. let it all out or let it all hang out? Which like let it my... all out. Okay, all right. My mind <laughs> notice my mind threw hang in there, letting it all hang out. <laughs> okay, sorry, that's 80s baby. Okay, let it all <laughs> Wait, I was about to put hang out again. Let it all out. <laughs> all right. I think of the word uh, free. You said free. Yes, mm. it's free. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah. We're jumping in this early. Mm. See what you see? Fahima just had her first instance of throwing in something to spice up the pot. I see what you're doing. <laughs> you were like long, long enough to know what it looks like. Okay. All right. So. She we did just spice up. Yeah, she did. She did. This is, uh, we, we go, yeah. So, nothing being hidden from God, stripped of preconceived, was that notions or thoughts? Notions. Notions. Let it all hang. <laughs> Let it all out. <laughs> Let it all out. I'm sorry. I got to take out hang. I'm sorry. I'm 80s. I'm thinking about all the songs. And then free. Wow. All right. I think nothing being hidden from God is very, very like descriptive in itself. We we got we got that. So that naked is like everything I have is exposed to God, mm -hmm. which is the, which is the goal, which is the uh, the design. And I'll reference in a second. I'll go. I'll, I'll bring us to Genesis. But that's the design. I mean, God didn't create man with clothes. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying they were walking around naked before him. And so nothing being hidden from him, there was nothing too high. So I, I thoroughly agree with that. Um, strip the preconceived notions. Can you break that down, A, B? So you're, we're talking about nakedness. You're saying being stripped of preconceived notions, notions. Can you break that down? So the way I see it is, you know, how Matt just was coming in and saying about the leaves and the fruit. And so the leaves being what you may show the world or may like think have showing that you have it going on where it's like deep down inside, like I know the real me and this is, you know, just letting everything that I'm trying to put up as a facade to other people and just mm. being your authentic self. Amen. Uh, Amen. So your form of nakedness is also like uh, taking out and making it to the point where it's authentic. It's yes. like things that's built up and so man as you're saying that it bring it brings to mind oh my goodness I've never connected these two it brings to mind when Christ said we need to return to childlike faith mm -hmm. because as a child you don't have a lot of preconceived notions and also as a child we're not looking at somebody's as as a child sees somebody many times as a true vision of how they see them they don't have to try to decode because they don't have that filter to go through it's not until you get to like middle school high school I'm like well that person's a liar or that person's um buying extra stuff to cover up like you learn those along the way but as like a toddler or a, a, a four-year-old what you see from your pure sense of your age you take it almost as face value so wow you just gave me a whole new outlook of 
like just the nakedness of how we perceive in the beginning without experience or uh the things that we've gone through how it taints and so man you just gave me wow and i think it's almost like now a nakedness to me as you're speaking this is like an authentic view is where faith resides because faith yeah. doesn't have to go through these different things in order to believe it's like no i take it at its truest form this is who god is this is what he said this is what i see there's no added extras to what he said this is who he is now as i grow and get older i have disappointments for myself or other people now i put those in a way between my faith and god but yes. now if you're looking man I, yes. never, I i didn't even so strip the preconceived notions the nakedness of it and how your mind is drawn in i received that um and that's, that's think about that and, like too with the the thing that's uh powerful about that too like the childlike faith, um, those of us who wow. have children, those of us who have children or those of us who have uh, uh, young siblings or nieces and nephews, there is nothing at a certain age, there's nothing that a child cannot do. Like yes. anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Anything is possible. It's like sometimes you want to you want to uh, you want to get on your child because they might have leaped off of something and leaped into your arms when you weren't ready. But all they knew was, oh, daddy's walking by. I'm standing on this thing. Let me jump off. <laughs> he going to catch me. It's like there was, there, was, there was nothing in their mind that said he wouldn't catch me. There was mm -hmm. nothing in their mind that says, is he ready? Is mm -hmm. he prepared? Does mm -hmm. he know That's I'm going to jump? Good. All they know is I see him, so I'll leap. Mm. Peter, said, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, let me come out on the water. Ask me to come out on the water. That was, he was returning to that. Is that you? Boom, I'm out. I don't need to wait on anything. That's, that, that's that child's like faith. And that's before, yeah. that's before it gets tainted or with, that's before it gets polluted with other people's perceptions of what's possible. Yes. A lot of times in our lives, mm. that's how we've arrived to where we are. Yeah. Our paradigm is made up of other people telling us what's possible instead of mm. letting God tell us what's possible. Yeah, yeah. Now, see what y'all just did there. See, my whole focus, <laughs> my whole focus on nakedness, what I thought where we were going is like us and, the, you know, the like the absolutely the let it all out kind, kind of outlook. But now we can attach it to an understanding of like the true sense. Like if we're stripped of preconceived notions, um, the word naked uh, biblically means like just to be bare, open, like that's where we have to go in our faith too yes. and it's almost like that's also the viewpoint we have to look when we're looking at god is like there's nothing there that's hidden in him to where we shouldn't be able to believe what he said or what he's calling us to do there's there's like a, a bareness to where we shouldn't have to have added in convincing yeah. mm. or confirmation it's like God, let me look at you because I'm going to remove my preconceived notions. I'm going to look at the authentic you. I'm going to look with my naked eyes at the, the God that's true without anything added that I put on. So right. think about the, the coding and the things that we put up because of our walk or our experience or things that we encountered. So, man, wasn't thinking that was going to come out now, but <laughs> I receive it. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that authenticity. I'm seeing it also as like the naked view, the naked view, like not just the bear, but like how you see things mm -hmm. without whatever experience or past situations or circumstances yes. attached to it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, how yeah. many people think about it? How many people do we know? Each of us probably know that walk into the next rest relationship with somebody carrying the viewpoint of the last relationship to where the new person is not seen naked or bare. They're seen through a lens of what took place from the last relationship, yeah. be it good or bad. And so this understanding of just being out there, and I, I like the word that Paul used yesterday. He said, faith is a risk. And I've never attached those two together. I'm like, yeah, it's like a risk in it because there's a vulnerability or a chance of us getting hurt or exposed, us yeah. being us being naked for some of us is fearful. Mm. And so 
I like that. Stripped of the preconceived notion. Man, I didn't did not see that coming. Look at y'all blindsiding us. Okay. And, and, and well, that's where you can that, and that, that's where that's where like those relationships, that's um being naked and being bare, that's one of the keys to having a successful relationship with anybody. Because yeah. like you said, if we come in, if we come into it with the things from the last relationship, um, you may be so one of the problems that may arise is you may keep criticizing somebody on their quote unquote outfit, but you put the clothes on them through what was in your last relationship. You keep talking yeah. about the outfit. Yeah. This ain't even my outfit. You gave me this outfit. This is not even how I normally dress. Wow. You, just made this for, you bought this for me. Yeah. This ain't even how I dress, but now you're criticizing that I ain't wearing it right. But this, this is not me. It's not me. So if you would let me strip down or they let the person strip down to who I am, then you would see how I get down. Mm. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, was- All right. So so <laughs> we, got, we, we, we already got two layers so far. Yeah. First, the push is for us to be naked, which is nothing hidden from God. And it's almost like now we're supposed, we need to work on seeing nakedness, seeing without mm-hmm. whatever layer, whatever covering that we place upon. And I think that also goes back to when we were learning from Paul, um, uh, Apostle Paul, when he was speaking about that, like, I don't, I'm, I'm not looking at what other people are doing. I'm not looking at what their ministries are. I'm not looking at their motives. I'm looking at the true sense of their professing Christ. So yeah. he's looking at the nakedness of what their message is. I'm not looking at their agenda. I'm not looking at their heart. I'm looking at them professing Christ. I will applaud them based on the fact that they're professing Christ. And mm. so for us yep. to have that outlook projected on others, oh man, I didn't, to be naked and to see nakedly, dang it, that mm. is crazy. Mm. Um, so, all right, write that down. If you have, if you have like <laughs> mental note, take, that is something that's an agenda. Like it's a stance, it's an outlook, and like, like it's just it's just yeah. in connecting that God, Christ was saying, like, I need you to have that kind of faith, that kind of outlook in me, in others. Like to have an optimistic outlook in others is as what God's ushering in for us to think of. It's like we're not supposed to look at somebody and think defeated or look at somebody and look at uh the pessimistic side or what they've done in the past god doesn't have that lens too god looks at us nakedly too even though we try yeah. to cover up he's, he's looking at us bare yeah. so That's it. That's all right it. so uh janika let it all out where, where we're going where we're going what was your frame of reference with that or did you have an example attached to that one i'm just going before god and just giving him everything because mm. he sees and knows it anyway like you said, we think we're hiding things, but just letting it all out, and giving it, giving it to him. So your nakedness, nakedness, you're you're saying that is like an offering unto him. So like, hey God, yeah. I'm going to give you access to all. Mm. So yeah. As we had the definition of nothing being hidden from God, it's one thing to kind of like, all right, it's all here, but it's another thing. Like, hey God, it's almost like, hey, whatever layer I may have on, let me take that off and let me give that unto you. And um, wow. I think okay, so that that's gonna lead into what we're going into, but they're all connected, man. And then last but not least, Fahima, you gotta break down this free. You gotta break down. No, you ain't breaking down the free. That's a that was a everyone a, has thoughts about it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> What's hey, your thought? The humble rap. Hey, give it to dude, us. All right, before before I let us. everybody jump in on this one, because I think <laughs> this one was like this was just from left field. Mm. What is your what is your reference for free? Like how did naked and free come to because everybody, everybody when they hear naked, some people like think naked, they get fearful. Like, you know what I'm saying? If somebody walked in on the room and be naked, like I'm gonna cover up. But somebody else, like we have whole colonies of people that walk around without clothes and right. they, they they do feel free. So how did that how did that word come out for you? How did free speak to you? Is there a place that you've gone in God to where that just kind of jumped out? Or is that just what you're translate? That's what came in when you heard a word. That's, I, that was literally just what came to mind. That's, that's, but I've been sitting here thinking about it since I knew my turn was going to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to have something to say. Um, I think it's sort of like an invitation to to be free. If if like you are 
<laughs> if God is asking you to be fully naked, it's like an invitation to be fully uh, free. It's like you get to um, every time. Every time. Yeah, you get to uh, kind of what Janika said, like to just be relaxed almost. It's just kind of like um, yeah. She. Yeah. Yeah. So it's look. And uh, who the who don't care who's looking. Right. Look. Yeah. But Fahima right. just messed us up because it's an invitation. She said an I invitation hey, to be that's, free. That's, look, look, look at this. Look at this. Think check check this out. Like how, how you were talking about the colony. So just imagine if you went somewhere where it was like a free spirit colony, right? You could have clothes on and feel like the oddball. <laughs> you fully clothed. And you would feel some kind of way. Why? Everybody else, they free. So here's Christ. He gives you that invitation to come in and just, hey, not let it all mm. hang out, but just let it all out. Yeah. Let it all out. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being somewhere? But the thing about being clothed, you would come to that group of people with your preconceived notions. Mm. So I'm clothed in what I think is right. I'm clothed in my past. I'm clothed in what other told me, other people told me was right. But now here with this group of people, boom, I can let it all out. And that is a picture of us as believers. As believers, we are a, we are a carefree people because we've cast our cares on God because he cares for mm -hmm. us. So we invite other people in to like, no, 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 no. You don't have to wear that. You don't have to hide that. You don't have to put on that mask. Who told you that? No, with me, you can be yourself. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we approach people the way he approaches us. Yes. Where I'm, I, not hold, I, I'm not holding you to anything. I have some. Okay. So the one thing that came to mind, I'll forgive me if I'm being a little secular right now. But um, when I was thinking about the free, just as everybody was talking, it, it, the movie Eight Mile, I don't know if anybody's mm -hmm. seen that. Yes. But at the end of the movie, how um, Eminem, when he was rapping, he said everything that could possibly have happened in his life that the other dude could have used as ammunition against him. He said it to the point that the, the dude couldn't even rap at that point because yes. he, he let it all hang out at that point. He was like, this is me. This is who I am. I'm owning up to it. And there's nothing you can say to use against me now yes. because I've already yeah. spoken it. Yes. I'm free of what you're trying to put on me or make it make it a negative. I'm making it a positive. Yes, that is me, but this is me now. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. And what you just said is like we define um the dangers of naked based upon what other people say. Like how many of us have been free in God and somebody's hit us with a warning, like, oh, are you sure you're supposed to do that? Is yeah. that is that really got like they come with the opposite? They're trying to clothe the faith that we have in God. Right. When we're exhibiting a freedom. And that's why sometimes God has to remove you from people that are quote unquote clothed because mm -hmm. they're going to speak op opposite to the freedom that he's offering. Um, yeah, that word invitations big because Ooh. in it is he's he's given us access like for us to be covered speaks to security. Right. Mm -hmm. It speaks to us being safe. It speaks to us being protected and depending on where we enter in with Christ, like his invitation for nakedness and freedom, it might take us a while for some of us is like, okay, this is God. Okay. Oh, this is what it's like to be a believer. Okay. Let me take my coat off. I feel comfortable mm -hmm. here. And then after a couple months, oh, okay, let me, I can take my hat off. Okay. My shoes. Oh, I can take off my shoes. You get down to your shirts and you're like, no, nah, I can't take off my undershirt and my bottoms. No, nah, I can't like, for me, that's I got to keep that because if I don't have that, then I'll be completely vulnerable. I'll be mm -hmm. completely out there. And that's what God's calling for. He's calling for us to have that freedom in him without having to have whatever layer that prevents yes. us from giving us yes. that layer that we keep on, whether it's the yeah. outlook, mm -hmm. whether it's a lifestyle for us, it keep, it's like a security blanket, but it's mm -hmm. also a limitation from him coming in. So yeah. that that I like how we're coupling that um that let it all out is like here God take it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I, I'm glad because now I'm offering you freedom from the exposure you're giving to me. Yes. So I I love that I love that 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 just that breakdown of God's looking for the bareness of us. 
And like mm-hmm. I said, it's not for any of us to be walking around nude in the streets. It's a <laughs> like I want somebody chiming into this message real quick. Like, oh, they said be naked, y'all. No, <laughs> we're talking about like in 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 a relationship with him, in communion with him, and it looks different for us, for each person. For some people, it's a direct invitation, like she's saying, God saying, hey, let me get that uh uh let me get that insecurity that you had in place that kept you warm at night. Let me get that mm-hmm. from you. Now, for you, that insecurity might have kept things at bay or it might have protected you in the past. But giving that to him, you allow him to enter in and do greater than what it had in place, because now he's exposed to it and he can have freedom to move in it. Man, it's the freedom he has. And man, it's double. Mm -hmm. Wow. So nakedness on two sides is if we're able to be naked and view naked and then also if we're able to uh allow him access to our freedom we can be free so it's like two sides to this and yes. i didn't i didn't i didn't see that until our conversation like just the understanding that this is beneficial in multiple ways because it gives us liberty and it gives him the liberty to move in our lives so on that um verse reference genesis 2 mm-hmm. and verses i'm just read 24 and 25 mm-hmm. genesis 2 2425. Uh this is why man uh this is why man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife and they become one flesh. Both the man and his wife were naked, yet felt no shame. So that that naked that God's looking for, that he's calling us into, it's attached to being unashamed. And I think that's where where we're going with the the liberty, the freedom, the invitation. There's no shame in where we are in him because we're let it all out and we've given him full access to where nothing's hidden. And so as we're we're looking at that as we're moving forward, my next question in this, how does it relate to us as believers? Um, we, we talked about it briefly about our our what we can do, but how does that relate to us? Let's do let's do it, let's do the first side. The first side, how does it relate to us? in our connection with God, being free, being unashamed. How does that uh, God's desire, which is this what he had for Adam and Eve in the beginning? This was his design in the beginning. It wasn't until sin came that clothing had to take place. But in the truest sense, they were unashamed, walking in the garden, having a conversation with the God of the universe, not worried about it. But after the fall, everything switched up. But for us now as believers, how does that relate? How does that outlook? How does that understanding, that unashamed, um, that freedom, how does that relate for us in our connection to God? We want to chime in on that one. Well, I think just looking at that, just looking at that picture in general, um, as believers, we are to, we are to allow God to get us back to that free state get us back to that liberated state. And that was the whole thing about Jesus coming. He came to set us free. And a part of that freedom was that being ashamed, was that thinking that we had to cover up, thinking that it's interesting because we, when, 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 um, when God asked Adam, where was he? He said, I hid because I was naked. And so God was like, who told you you were naked? Who told you there was something you had to cover up? So right then he knew you're listening or hearing something that I didn't intend. You're you're taking on a mindset I didn't intend for you to have. So I think that's the the first thing. Our relationship with God is stripping off that mindset of the world and being free to believe God, take him at his word. Okay. And and as and adding adding into that in conjunction with that. He had nothing to hide from God until sin took place. There was nothing for him to hide. Like he had complete autonomy to move in the garden because there was nothing ill taking place. So that is the goal to get back to that place where like, God, search me. There's 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 nothing here that I want to hide. That's that let it out. And then the next side is what about those parts of our lives that we don't know need to be exposed? Mm -hmm. So. As believers, we want to get back to that state where God has access to all. True. Yeah. So for us as believers, how do we move into that place of being naked? 
because for some things for like i said if we go back to the just a uh, the uh the uh example i had of if you walked in and you had multiple layers on taking some of those layer off made sense like oh i can take off my hat i take off my coat it makes sense that's easy to do too oh, i could take off this oh you know shoes socks those come off easily but the parts where we hold on to things how do we begin to give god access to the deeper so it might be something you've done personally or something that god's showing you in in the word how do we get to that place of being naked before him how do we get to that nakedness anybody want to from their personal walk or what you know from scripture janika sat up like she's about to throw, throw a big hat <laughs> around. she's like oh mm. <laughs> no well for me i would i want to say um it takes prayer and it takes time okay. uh, wait hold on hold on so when you when you're referring to prayer is it your prayer was like hey god search me or is it like while in prayer he's identifying areas like how did like when you're speaking about prayer like what what like angle is it coming from um i have two angles i guess i guess it's both like for example one is when i was a, a child mm -hmm. i grew up in church but mm -hmm. you have your cousins and everybody around you and this one getting the holy ghost and this one getting whatever and then you or and then you there's always like a one with your friends or whatever and they they looking at them like ooh, you know what i'm saying so you like I want it, but mm, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so friends, I, I, you know, but I'm saying like friend from a people's opinion, you know, who cares who's looking at you? Um, yeah. So, 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 so you're saying, so in that, in that sense, you're saying you were looking for that freedom. Yeah. Okay. So people are, so, so, and you know what, that's, that's true. How many times have we seen people, and this is, in, like I said, you grew up in church. How many times have we had an encounter or seen somebody fresh off the street who are like pouring out tears like, hey, I, I'm trying to get this over. Like, I'm, I'm burdened. I'm heavy. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get this over to God. So some people are seeking that freedom of nakedness. Some people mm -hmm. are searching out a way to be completely honest and transparent. And so, okay, I, I, I've seen it and I can attest to that. There's people who are seeking out that freedom. Amen. They're looking for that nakedness. Okay. And, you and, said then, like, and then on the other hand, while mm -hmm. you get the Holy Ghost and live the life, you still have hidden stuff. So like you said, Lord, search me. That's like a more mature prayer. Search okay. me, Lord. Like dig it out because I don't want it. I don't want yeah. it. Yeah. It so, you're, so, so now you're... You're taking his invitation like, hey, he's offering freedom. Now that I know areas are free, I want the whole thing done. So right. God, purge me, pull me out, highlight. So, okay, so people sometimes are looking for it. Some people yeah. are seeking that out and for them to go into God to allow him that access and then to let it be a continual thing. Amen, yeah. amen. Any, anybody else, something to add or uh, kind of bring another lens to it? I like that one. That was that was very strong because that speaks to actually i'm not to cut anybody off that speaks to anybody any walk of life because if you're on the street this is the freedom that you you're you you've been you might not even put a name to it like until today i wouldn't have put a name to nakedness as freedom but now it's like people are when they're looking for freedom from whatever they're bound in it's like they're looking for a nakedness they're looking for an openness that god's offering and then us as believers who already know him we want to go deeper in him. In order to do that, we need to give more exposure to him on whatever areas of our life. So, yeah, that speaks to anybody. I love yes. it. I love it. Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. So, for me Hallelujah. in that, it's, um, he's kind of done it through the vulnerability. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay. Wait, wait, wait uh, first, before you go too deep. Vulnerability of, I'm, I'm assuming it's you. But like, speak on like the vulnerability, like where you were at the time or what you gave to him. Like, how does that vulnerability look? So honestly, it's continuous. Okay. It's, it's like in phases. Yes. 
And it, it might start at one point, that point that for me seemed like it needed the most work. And, uh -huh. and it was a struggle to now it's at the point where I just willingly will give up something and say, hey, this is an issue for me, or I feel like this is causing me to struggle a little bit. And it's, it's not so complicated. So it, I'm, I'm always going to have things that I'm working through, you know, so I've accepted that. So that's the vulnerability is that I'm not perfect. It's I'm just trying to do what I know is yeah. right and move forward. Right. Yes. And so in that state of vulnerability, it's like um, he's kind of taking me from a level of responsibility where I'm feeling like I have to be, a, I have to own everything that's happened to me, like even things that I didn't create, things that mm -hmm. I was born into or situations that I was around. And I'm holding on to this, like, okay, if people don't know this or I don't act like this, then you can't associate me with certain things. Mm -hmm. And so now we've switched from me being responsible for all of that pain and anger and whatever else was attached to it to me giving him ownership. And now I'm just accountable for saying those were my actions, but this is where I am now. And I'm going to keep yeah. progressing in that. And yes. it doesn't hold me anymore. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Before you, before you, because you, you had so many good points in there. All right. So you, you, you touched on the vulnerability. Um, when when you're speaking about addressing the things that you see in you is that from a god lens of him exposing you to it or like a self-assessment that you're established like this is what i see of myself or is this like something he's prompting saying this is what i want to work on the more of me that i give to him the more he reveals and the it's like the closer we get and the more yes. time i spend in yes. conversation the more time i spend in my word the more I start to see myself and I see the things that he needs me to see. Mm. And so you start to identify those things that, that don't fit into his picture. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and of course we all want to have this wide lens view of who we are, but when you're dealing with God, he's got this narrow, clean scope of who you are. Like he yes. honed in on exactly who you are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And he's seeing you when you get there. So you have to work in that process and get to where he's viewing you. And you, all right, so you, you're speaking freedom for somebody right now. I mean, whether somebody's watching this in real time or they watch it days, months in the future, this is not only hope, but it's an example of how God does it when we give him access. Like, it's almost like contagiousness. Like, the as he enters in and he starts touching certain areas, and the more we open up, is the more areas he'll highlight and touch on more of those. I love it. The more of me I give to him, the more he reveals. And like I said, it strips that layer of whatever preconceived outlook we even have of ourselves or of him. And we get to see the trueness of, I'm not matching up to what he sees. And I'm going to allow him access to do what he needs to get me to that place. And at the same time, I used to look at him a certain, I like, I'll be completely transparent. I used to read the Bible before, before I read the Bible for myself, I had a preconceived outlook of who I thought God was, his uh, his actions, his outlook. I thought from my template of right or wrong that I had God down pat. And then when I started reading the Old Testament, I'm like, wait a minute, nah, that's, uh -uh. and then I started disagreeing and then I had questions with God. And as he's showing me things, I'm like, oh, that's layers being taken. I'm being stripped off of something that I put as a filter over God and even saw as him. And so he's showing me almost my own, in it, he's showing his true nature, but also showing me my arrogance for projecting on him a, a, a definition or a title or or characteristic based mm -hmm. on my own lens. Mm -hmm. So like, it's it's still like, so as you're saying this, it's dual work being done. So as you're reading the word, he's revealing to you his character, which in reflection in the mirror, is showing you the characteristics that he wants to remove out of you. Yes. Dang, that's yes. powerful. That is yes. powerful. Yes. So that the, the openness, the freedom, the nakedness is allowing him to expose, be exposed to all parts. Mm. And I think we, we were talking about that even in the um the Kingdom Citizen series. We we're talking about stretching, how we expose new areas to God so he can work out the pain or working out. I yeah. guess that's 
that's that nakedness. You do a full stretch, so he can be like, up oh, that area burns. They move there. I love oh. that, man. Man. And then I also, I also think naked. that. Yeah. Hold on. We'll go Matt. Okay. Then back nah, to, go ahead. Go ahead, Maisha. Oh, because I was just thinking about like how you guys were expressing nakedness, and for me, it's like it was wilderness being revealed and raw. Like it's. Mm -hmm all a state of being bare, but with the wilderness aspect is you're allowing him to control the environment that you're in. You're allowing him the time to walk you through what's in you to take it out, to put into you. Like you have to solely depend on him for all of it. So you're, you're starting fresh, you're naked. Like it's all new for you. And he's gonna reveal those things. And being revealed is, is a oh very goodness. open process. You know, like yeah. it's, it's admitting to things that Maybe you didn't want others to see or know, or even you didn't right. know yourself. So. And when you put it all out there like that, they can't they can't say nothing to you. Yeah. It's they like Chanel was saying, anything. once you own it and you're already accountable for it, like what else is there? Exactly. It it holds no weight anymore. Like right. I've given all this stuff Those, to oh, God. Yeah. That's the ultimate power. What can you exactly? Do? Those other things have no more weight. So that yeah. that stripping removes the weight of whatever expectation that's outside of him that wasn't a factor in the first place. Yes. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Matt, you had something to add. Maisha was talking about the more she's praying, the more she's reading, the more she's doing things unto God. Um, what we're talking about now is that nakedness, um, exposing ourselves to the presence of God doesn't matter how much you want to do something, how much you will to do something, change happens in the presence of God. So there may be things we don't know about. The presence of God, spending time with him, praying, reading, he will speak and reveal those things. So yeah, I think that's one of the, one of the areas to focus on is, am I spending time in the presence of God? How much time in the presence of God? And, uh, each person God speaks to differently concerning what's needed um, in order to reveal and strip away. It, it actually makes me think of um, uh, babies, newborn babies. It's actually known that a baby can actually be adversely affected by not being held. You take a newborn baby and you don't hold it long enough, the baby can actually die from not being held. So think about us being in the presence of God, God holds us, nurtures us, nourishes us, mm. and reveals, reveals to us. So, hey, yeah. and even we, even on that, for the I mean, I got five kids. I know this. There's there's a, a urgency after the baby's born to have that skin to skin contact with yes. the mother, and so there's yes. no layers in there. It's not like, hey, let's dress the baby. Nah, put the bare baby on the bare mother. And so there's a transference of a connection that takes place there. So yes. it, it, plays out, it, it plays Naked. out in a natural, plays out in natural. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't going to share, but I guess I have to now because my is all in my conversation with God. Um, <laughs> and I didn't see how it connected until just now. So I was speaking earlier that God was like kind of showing me like there's not only a mandate, there's an agenda for us as lifeline. And a part of that is being that transparent and open and it fuels us into growth and maturity. And as I did not see the two sides that uh, speaking of, whether it's the freedom, it's the invitation, all of those things is dual purpose. And so God was speaking, he was like, as we grow or as each of us goes greater in him and the kingdom, um, he kind of gave me like, just like a mandate. And he said, you use the word raw. And that's exactly what he gave me. He said raw. And it's like, you reach and then you activate and then you work and so for all of us it's a consistent whether you're new into christ when you walk in the door you're reached god reaches you he touches you mm -hmm. what he reveals to you is something great and so you're activated by it and then you work it out you you put it into operation you employ it into your life you incorporate it and that's true for us now even those who know him he reaches us on a new area to saying like, hey, this is what I want you to be free from or to be exposed to in me. I want nakedness. So I'm going to reach you in this new area. And once I reach you, once I show you that area, I'm going to activate you and give you the power to step into it, to be stronger, to be greater. And once you're activated, you got work to do now. 
Now you got to live it out. You got to model it. You got to show somebody else. I want you to be the power that I've given you to somebody else. So the fact that you just used that word raw, which was not uh, uh, <laughs> scheduled or rehearsed, it kind of it kind of see. I didn't even see how all this came together. And that's what we're called to do as a body. So God's constantly doing the work. And I think between Janika saying like having that mature prayer, like God, show me the next area and he'll show you. And like I was talking right before everybody came on, there's a part of God showing you when you get to a certain area or walking him a level in him to where it's like, I'm going to show you, but I'm not going to do it for you. I'm going to show you and I'm going to give you the ability, the duration, the, uh, the strength, the spiritual know-how to carry it out and live it out. That way it's permanent. Like he told the uh, uh, children of Israel, I didn't remove the inhabitants of Canaan because if I did, the wild animals would have tore you asunder. So I'm giving this to you. I'm going to leave you out there, but I'm going to give you the resources to be able to accomplish it and make it permanent. So for us, that nakedness, as we're walking out the truth of who we are, bearing it all to God, being unashamed, he fills us with the resources, like you said, with the eight mile, like, hey, what you going to say now that I've put it out there and I'm bold and I'm unashamed and I'm confident in it? You can't take away from me nothing that you don't have power in the first place. And that also goes from the natural to the spiritual. There's things that mm-hmm. the adversary is going to come in and he's going to try and put you out. Oh, you vulnerable. You out there. You fast and you hungry. I know who I am. I stepped out here on purpose. God yeah. offered me freedom. And I'm yes. bare right now, but I'm completely free. So whatever ammunition you had, maybe in the past or even this season to try and pull me out, you can't. It's been mm. disarmed. The yes. snare has been broken. Like so God's given us victory in so many areas. And I like, I'm like astonished on the things that y'all done came up with. I'm walking out of here with some nuggets, authenticity, <laughs> invitation, get back to the face, the uh the 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 the, the actual yes. state of being free and naked in him. That's what he designed to where there's no barriers between it. He doesn't want us to be like, oh, let me cover this up. God, I'll let you work in this area. But this one over here, let me keep tucked. Because if you see this, you might not want to use me, right? So let me cover this up. Because this one right here, this is a deal breaker for you, God. I know it is. But he's like, ah, oh, let me see that. What's, it, what's behind your back? Like, he's looking for it. And so, you know, um, I was just saying, um when she said raw and then when you said raw I was like I want to look at what the definition because you know when you think of raw I was thinking about vegetables and when vegetables are raw it has its nutrients so I was thinking when you're raw you're at your healthiest you have everything essential once it becomes cooked it loses it but at the rawness you have you, you know yeah <laughs> hey when they add all the extra seasoning and the, you'll put salt and sugar and everything folks let's go <laughs> <laughs> what talking about let's keep it bare Keep it there. Keep it the way it's supposed to be. Yes. Man, oh, you know, it it's always takes one wordsmith to bring it out and kind of put it out there on the wall. But yes, he wants us in a raw, bare, naked state because we're the richest. We're the most powerful. We're the most impactful. We're the most potent. And for us walking in him, it's a constant going back to a nakedness. Him exposing another layer that we've built up over a lifetime that he wants to strip off to return us back to the purity of what he put in in the first place. Oh my goodness, this is killing me. All right, I love it. All right, so before we get out of here, I want to help those who may be in a digital space because you all are mature people in Christ. You've given God every area of life. I love it. Um, But this is for uh, looking at, we had examples with Maisha and Janika, like, hey, this is my prayer. This is what I'm searching God for. And then also I'm reading the word. God's talking to me. He's showing me his character. It's convicting me. He's pointing out those areas to bring me to that state of nakedness. So the opposite of naked is covered. The opposite is having layers. It's not being fully exposed because some people have uh, protections and safeguards put in place that they think they need to keep them in survival mode. But at the same time, it keeps God at bay. It keeps him at a distance. And so as I was looking this up, I was looking at, and you might chime in too, I was looking at different components of why people are prevented from being completely naked. And one of them, and I think uh, the the three that I wrote down, they can kind of branch off. But the first one I wrote is people um, aren't completely naked because they aren't completely honest. Mm -hmm. Like the first level of when God's coming, sometimes people can't fully address something 
and because of that 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 un that that lens that has layers on it sometimes they see something that's not as what it is because it's based upon the lens they see it as that's why when you have addicts you're like yo you you strung out on this very harsh drug i'm okay it's just you know every now and then yeah. uh it's not that bad or you talk somebody in abusive relationship well he really loves me but you know it's it, he loses his temp like they downplay it and yeah. so some of the like the symptoms of people who aren't completely honest it tends to be the words they use like if somebody's saying oh it's just oh you know it's only um no, it's not really like in and right. almost like those those words where they make it seem lighter or they don't fully cast light on it it causes people to think that what may have what they think is exposed is not actually exposed so i want to challenge anybody first if you're at a place where you're in god and you might feel like you're hitting the ceiling or you might throw these words out without even thinking it might be a time for you to investigate whether you're transparent whether mm. you're being honest with yourself and god and like looking at that self-evaluation and all of us doesn't have the liberty of having somebody who's close to us to be able to be that lens that mirror or to be that soundboard you might need to seek somebody out in god to find the person who can be established because there's many times i mean props to maisha i, I mean i'm I, everybody can't take the full brunt of God showing them themselves. Mm -hmm. Some people, when God shows them them, they want to turn and run and suck tail. So each person looks different. That prayer might be for some people today, like God, uh, show me the areas where I've slighted what the reality is. So the, the honesty is a big piece of that. And if anybody want to touch on that one, I'm going to hop on to the next one. Anybody I would just, I, I would also say, give me the strength to endure as you reveal it to me. So I don't turn away. You know what I mean? It's yeah. one thing to say it, but then also like, okay, you know who I am. You know, I run from certain things like this. So help me stand and Amen. listen. Amen. So that, and I, Hey, that's a powerful mm -hmm. prayer right there. Like God, give me the strength to confront this, to be mm -hmm. able to face this thing and not run away from it. Um, the second point is people who aren't completely naked are those who are not completely healed. There's times when you'll survive a situation and just because you made it out physically doesn't mean you address the spiritual, emotional, psychological attachments to it. And um, in, in conversation with people, you hear, you ever heard somebody say, you start talking about a subject or a past experience, like, oh, I'm over that. I'm good. I'm cool. Like, just hopping over it that fast without wanting to look at it, you survived it. That means you got past it, but there's still a wound there that you haven't given God. You haven't opened that up. You haven't bared that wound for God to address it. And if you can't face a similar situation, that's something that you have to allow God access to, to get yeah. to that place of freedom. Ultimately it's freedom because if you're holding on to this thing because it hurts, and you don't want to expose it to the world or God, you're walking around bound by it, another layer, thinking that, hey, I'm doing good, but you're hobbling the whole time because it's tucked under your trench coat. You have to let it go. Um, add-ins on the portion about not being healed. Anybody have anything to add in on that or prayer that somebody might want to pray? Good? Okay, okay. Uh, go ahead, sorry, got you. Okay, all right. All right, and, and then the, the last the last one is there a kid just walk in the room? <laughs> uh then the last last one is uh people aren't fully naked because they're not willing. They're unwilling to want to even entertain going deeper. And those sound like those tangible stops when people say, Oh, I can't, I won't, you ain't gonna disrespect me. Um their standards kind of sit in the place of their bareness. They put their standards in between them being fully exposed because their standards are who they are. I don't let nothing override. This is who I am to remove my standard removes me. And God's like, that standards preventing me from getting to the genuine you. Yes. So looking right. at the, the willingness is a big component of God's not gonna force his way. He's not gonna say, well, I'm stripping you down. You're gonna be naked. Because then you're going to still be trying to cover up and hide and right. he's looking for it to be willingly. 
he's looking for it to be something that you submit unto him. So mm -hmm. um, the unwilling is something that has to be addressed if people are looking to grow and mature in him because they have to heal from those things or they have mm -hmm. to expose them to the deeper. Anybody yeah. got a prayer on that one? I like these prayers. You know, I was just thinking back to the previous one because these are all personal things for me, of course. I'll be having oh. conversations like this with him. And so um, for me personally, I would say if I know that I've ex expressed myself in, in, to other people and it hasn't been received in the way that I want it to, or maybe just even relationships. And of course, you know, he have a tendency to compare our earthly relationships to God. I'll be like, God, show me, I can trust you. Show me that you won't break my heart. Even though I know that he's God, but just show me that it's okay for me to be safe in this environment that I can express myself and, and you'll just hear me and you won't turn against me or whatever the case may be. Like I said, it's a, sometimes we need to break that down because a lot of, a lot of times, you know, we look at God as just being God, like, oh, you know, you're not supposed to challenge him. You're not supposed to say that, but he wants those intimate parts of us. That's how we feel anyways. You might as well just own up to it and be like, I'm hurt. And I need somebody that I can talk to that I can feel safe within this moment and just be vulnerable and know you're not going to turn away even seeing the most vile parts of me. Mm -hmm. and loving me through it and yeah. that's and, and that's that that's that sometimes that layer that we put up that we place on god we yeah. take away from his trueness his genuineness because we're transposing on him situations or people that's not only something he didn't do it's not his character but from our experience that's what we're trying to cover ourselves from and that's what we project on him. So yeah, that's a very intelligent prayer. And in it, when you're able to do that before God, and after you make that prayer, you step deeper into him, it gives him access to do the work. It gives him access to mature and grow. And I, I mean, I can testify because I've seen not only the prayers that you pray come to light, but I've seen the output of what he's done in your life. So you're a living testimony of that and allowing him access to it. And that's where that unlocking comes from. That's what that, that unlocking looks like freedom. Yeah. That unlocking looks like upgrade because if you're walking around carrying a layer or, or a covering that's outside of him, you're living beneath what he has assigned for you. And you're bearing a burden of trying to sustain something that's not even close to the freedom yeah. he's offering in yeah. the openness. So yeah, that is, that is a prayer to pray. That is something that each of us can do right now. Whoever's out there, if you're at a difficult spot, pray the prayer of God. Hey, I have difficulty with trusting. There's pain there. But Lord, you do that work. I'm giving this to you. I'm showing it to you. I trust you. I'm trusting you. I've seen what men do. I've seen what my family do. I've seen what women do. I'm giving this to you because you're above them and allowing him to access that part for that growth that healing and that breakthrough to take place. Yes, that is. And I then once, you, once you do that, it can help into the third question that you ask, because once you've allowed him access and you've been honest, then he can he can start showing you, you may feel this way based upon what other people have placed on you, but you're my princess, you're my daughter, right. you're my whatever, you know what I mean? And he'll start showing you the other side of it where you can be like, okay, this is me now, mm -hmm. you know? Because- because he knows. This reminds me of David when he had sinned with Bathsheba mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then uh, he tried to cover it up and then uh, the prophet Nathan had to come in and tell him because God already knew. And then his prayer was, create in me a clean heart, O God, and mm -hmm. renew the right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. This whole thing, that's what, remind, that's what it reminds me of. And I often have to pray, uh, go to the word and just pray that what David prayed and and let it and let it and let it flow out in genuineness like David yeah. wasn't doing it to satisfy somebody right. else like so when Saul got busted King Saul got busted he was like hey hey uh Samuel won't you restore me in front of the men no right prayer was unto God it's like unto you I'm bearing myself unto you I don't care about what these people who serve me say I don't care what the nation is going to say. It's unto yes. you, you alone. So that direct connection to God is what's yeah. needed. So as we're, as we're growing, as we're maturing, we should be looking for the next area 
that God wants to make free to him, that he wants to be exposed to him. He wants us naked, whether it's a lifestyle, whether it's the way you talk, whether it's the uh, outlook you have, whether it's the emotions you harbor against, the bitterness, all of it. He's looking for those areas to perfect us. And like Maisha said, we're not perfect, mm -hmm. but his process perfects us. It mm -hmm. makes us greater. And he could be attending to one area for umpteenth amount of years because there's still different sides of it. There's different sides of anger. There's different sides of jealousy. There's different sides of lust. There's different sides of hate. Like he could be yeah. attending to it from different angles. But if we like, well, I, I did that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you touched that uh, bitterness button. You know, I exposed myself. I'm good here. And God's like, that was level four. Yeah. Level four trillion. That you right. Get to <laughs> because you think level four is where you topped <laughs> out. Show me that again. Open up that part of your jacket again. Cool. Right. Let me show you another area of it. And actually, that's another part when people like, I thought I learned this lesson already. When people <laughs> say that, it's automatically a giveaway. You need to be naked again. Go strip <laughs> off some layers. Go strip off some layers. Free. Yeah. So, um, dang, I, that is so I healthy. just wanted to add in, because I remember when I first started, and the one thing that would always throw me off is like when I was in church, when I started going to church, it was like people praying. And you'd see like prayer at different levels. And I'm like, I'm not that connected. Like, I'm not that deep. Like, I don't know the scriptures. What am I going to say? Like, how does this <laughs> even start? And I mean, honestly, he sent me to the right place because covenant is simply just having a relationship and a conversation with God. Yeah. And like, it just started as, for me, like simple girlfriend talk, like, you know, this is my issue and mm -hmm. I'm hearing that you can do something about it and, you know, let's see what you got. <laughs> but, I mean, honestly, that's really how hey, it's I heard, I heard you got some connections here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I, like, I heard you was the man. You could fix this. Like, yeah. what can you hey, do? You're the first you know? person I know that stepped a guy like, yeah, I know. I know a guy. <laughs> like, everybody's like, hey, I know I a mean, guy. Really, like, that was our open honest raw relationship it was like yeah. he gradually showed me how to talk to him what yeah, he man. needed to hear from me what he wanted but he accepted what i gave him he just wanted my conversation That's yeah because you came at him wrong <laughs> he wanted it and it's like he switched me from a point of responsibility to accountability and it's yeah. a big difference in owning issues yeah. you know and carrying them I can Amen. own that I did it all day, but I can't walk around with it. That's his Amen. job. Come on. Like, that's the whole point of me being new in him is giving him that old stuff and giving yeah. him whatever comes next. Yeah. Like, it's all his. He just wants to know that he has ownership. And yeah. that's, just, that's, that's it. His responsibility, your accountability. That's it. Yeah. That's, 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 a tr that's a transition. And that's, that's a giving unto him. And like I said, that you're speaking about like that rawness, that, that openness. It's a continual. It's a continual. And I like how just even an example, he used your openness in prayer to begin to grow you into areas of your life. Like you might have just came in like, well, I'm be honest and open in this prayer. I'm gonna be free in this prayer. He's like, cool. That's my entrance. That's where I'm gonna mm -hmm. walk in. And now that I got, oh, okay, what oh, what's this area over here? Oh, that mm -hmm. dang prayer, God. But no, let's keep let's talk about it since I'm already here. So you allow him to get that place to where he's quote unquote contagious or infecting other parts of our lives. And that's where our perfecting comes from. He still needs willingness. So we continuing to allow him that access is where that freedom comes in. The more freedom, the more boldness. Yes. Yeah. No, no, we're not going to a different um y'all trying to y'all trying to kick this into gear number two. I'm trying to keep this I'm trying to keep this level one for certain people. <laughs> it's it's, it's hey, like hey, when hey, when, hey. Matt, when Matthew said we do God math where we have to subtract to increase subtract, subtract to multiply. <laughs> hey look see look to see. multiply like we go back we lose things to gain things. Yeah yeah I'm trying y'all trying to y'all trying to string this together like uh, the, uh <laughs> the old school to, uh the, the necklaces with Cheerios on it. See what you're doing see what you're doing you're trying to get people nibbling but nah I agree with that. I totally agree. That's where that power comes from, where the boldness comes from, because our openness, our freedom, because we've been exposed to him and we know his character, we've given him access to places that might have been dark and hidden. 
in it, we're freer, we're stronger. He speaks to us and tells us who we are. And that's where the certainty comes from. That's where yeah. the assurance comes from. That's what you can't take away from something that God's nominated, something yeah. that he's defined and he said. Mm-hmm. And in that openness is where it takes place. So, well, because want- I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I was just thinking about like when Matt said earlier, and even with you talking about the child likeness, when you think about your children, they don't care who's around, they're going to ask for what they want. And like when Maisha was just talking about how she just started off and then how her relationship just kind of built from there. There, she's taking the stance on I'm not just on the outside but now I'm your daughter so I can come to you freely and just say whatever it is that I have on my heart to say to you and you're going to hear me you have nothing but to hear me at this point but you know what I'm saying like and, yeah no and so I want I want the people who are listening or people who watch this back do not be afraid of your nakedness before God for one release the thing that might have kept you or lightweight kept you protected at the same time god's not offended when you are open before him when you're speaking candidly when you're revealing how you feel when you're talking about the dark areas of your life it allows him access to it he's not going to shudder and like oh no i didn't want to see that child he already knew he was there during that time he was there before the thoughts came he right was there before the situation took place he was there before the desire hit he knew yes He's been there. So for him to not want to take that on to make you a work of progress is something that we have to address in ourselves. So somebody needs to be free of that thought of like, man, I can't I can't show God this. Yes, you. He mm-hmm. wants it. He's looking for it because he can upgrade that area if he yes. gets to him. So I'm praying that and we're going to pray in a second that somebody lets go unto God that they Amen. become there before him, because if God's upgrading in a season, I don't want anybody to miss it. And I don't want any apprehension or fear or old concerns that fabricated on our, we fabricate ourselves sometimes from our experience. We hold uh, God at bay because of things that we expect him to do or say to us. So Mm -hmm. as we're stepping into him, know that he's loving and patient and not only considerate, he's gentle. He's gentle to adjust those areas that are painful for us. But when he opens them up, it's like, he does a work that's not only smooth and it's like it's strategic, it's surgical, but it's painless in his hands. So yeah. being willing to do that and us as believers who are in him, let that be our prayer. Let that be a hey God. What's the next area? What's the area of my life that I have difficulty bringing up? Yeah. What's the area when I think back on my own, I shudder or I don't share with my spouse or I don't talk with my friends even though they've known me my whole life, this one area, this dark area, this dark time, how I felt, what I was thinking, I don't want to share that with them. They've seen some stuff, but they see that one, uh, they're going to be out of here. That's the part that God wants. That's the part he wants to give up because it might be not be on you to share with them, but to give it to him gives them the opportunity to work on it. Yeah. So, yes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I pray that from our understanding Mm -hmm. and your revelation, Lord God, that not only are we pushed or or guided into greater in you because of the things that we let go before you, Lord God. I pray our stance, our position is with open arms, open hearts, open minds. I pray that there's a flashlight in your spirit, Lord God, that highlights every corner, every crevice, every nook of our lives, of our character, of our spirit that you wanna do a work in, Lord. Let there be identification that takes place within the next couple of days. As yes, we're concluding our consecration, mm-hmm. as we're stepping into the end of the season of being upgraded, Lord God, let us not harbor any uncharted area in our lives that you're looking for access mm-hmm. for. So, Lord, I pray that you do a full work in us and we're not only will of, of, of apprehensions, of barriers, Lord God, we want to be before you naked, not hiding anything from you letting it all out, Lord God, authentic, and let us be free, ultimately, be free in our raw approach in you, Lord God. Let us receive completely. And Lord, I pray right now for those or someone who's out there in the airwaves, Lord, who's struggling with being free, trapped by a lifestyle, trapped by decisions they made of the past, Lord God. Their release, their freedom lies in their nakedness before you, Lord. So I pray that you send somebody to speak to them. Let your spirit nudge their heart again. 
Let them have a conversation with someone who cares. Let a word be repeated in their spirits that gives them an invitation to come before you open and bear. Lord God, let us return to that place that you had in Eden where we walk unashamed without anything hidden because there's nothing that we're scared to show you. And Lord God, we trust that not only are you patient, you're loving, you're forgiving. You've died for each of our sins that we're hiding yes, from. You did. You died from the outlooks, from the words, from the thoughts, from the feelings, Lord God. You took those on the cross on our behalf. So for us to hold them, for us to keep them, Lord God, is preventing what you've already paid the price for. So Lord, I pray that those who may be constricted spiritually right now, that they Hallelujah. give over unto you, that they step out of this place of being numb, of trying to survive on their own, trying to hoard and keep and cover and layer up to stay protected, Lord God. I pray that yeah. that wall is broken down this evening. Yes, Somebody Lord. Is delivered into Thank your you. hands. Thank you, so yes, we bless Jesus. You. We look for your heavenly outcome. Oh, In yes, Jesus' Jesus. name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Who the sun says Amen. free indeed. Free indeed. Amen. Hey, Amen. hey, I almost want to take the words out. Who the sun sets naked. It's naked indeed. <laughs> you might need to work on that one. <laughs> put, 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 my, put my spin on it. So I thank you all. I love your uh, your outlooks, your stances, um, your revelation. And as God shows you him, we share amongst each other. We get to eat from a bigger plate. So I get to mm -hmm. smile tonight. I got a couple of definitions that I'm going to be stewing on this evening. And hopefully I'll wake up in the morning with a naked approach before God so I can be free. Amen. So I can be authentic, you know what I'm saying? So I can accept his invitation. I'm trying yes. to live raw, trying to get that raw <laughs> life in. So, um, yeah, I appreciate everything you guys added in. Our conversations are already rich, always rich. And I pray that somebody in a digital space is blessed. If you want to comment, comment. If you want to check it out in the next couple of days, let this conversation sit with you because this is... This is liberating. This is truly liberating. Yes. And we got a couple more days for the upgrade to take place. So let's get it, y'all. Yes. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's get it. <laughs> and before I forget, tomorrow we have champion chats. We have Kavon Dobbs coming from um, Niagara Falls, New York, in Ohio right now. So tune in. Oh, we're, we're still consecrating, but we can tap into that live and then shut down Facebook right afterwards. We <laughs> won't want to get caught up with the craziness. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to stay naked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys finish out your uh, consecration strong and I will check in. Love each and every one of y'all. Yes. We love you too. Love you too. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Bye.